it's Epic Warpath versus Legions Imperialis. Which one should you buy? Which would you choose? Um, I've done a lot of thinking about this. I'm a fan of both the game systems, and but for my money, only one is gonna get my dollars and earn some shelf space and play time. Um, I should start by saying, obviously, this is heavily subjective stuff. Um, I have researched both games closely. Obviously, I have not played Warpath. It's completely new in Kickstarter right now. Um, and I have not uh, taken the plunge on Legions Imperialis yet, so I've not played it. But I have watched both game systems very, very closely. Um, I've watched battle reports of them being played um, and researched them quite a bit. So I'm evaluating across these kind of components, miniatures, gameplay, lore fluff background, value for your hobby dollars, company support, and overall flavor and fun. Uh, let's get into it. Obviously, starting with the big bad miniatures, I think this is a pretty fair comparison. Based on what we can see right now of um, the uh, pre-release uh, plastics that are coming out of Mantic for Warpath, uh, non-production or early production shots of the armies versus what we know to be true in Legion's Imperialis right now for what's out there. Um, they're very close. Uh, you might even bump Legion's Imperialis all the way up to a five comparatively. I, I could see that. Um, let's take a look at some things, right? So these are obviously renders right now. Um, uh, we got some space dwarves on the left. Those are called Forge Fathers and some more space marine looking types, AKA enforcers in the Warpath universe on the right, um, both looking very good in my opinion. And here's a real world shot of an enforcer army painted to a standard that is realistic, right? That is not a painting god standard that's very achievable. Uh, I have some criticisms there. In the center, you'll see in pairs, these fast looking jet bike types. Um, I would advise anybody painting those to get some more separation between their rider and their bike. Um, I also am just going to say the APCs slash tanks here. Um, I, the smaller guns seem to fit. Those three in the back with the larger guns look a little too hot, top heavy to my taste. But overall, the infantry looks great. Uh, I think it's a good looking army and a simple, effective paint scheme. Let's look at another one. These guys are called the Scur... Or not the Scurs, the Plague. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, they are zombified uh, humans in different uh, flavors and forms. Well, there's even some zombified aliens as well, too. Um, don't see any of those there yet. I think those are all just humans. Uh, these vehicles look much better to me. The ones with the little spiky cattle catcher on them are called mules. Those, are, those look really great. Um, the artillery looks pretty good. Probably drill those barrels out to give us some depth and make, make us believe a little bit more. But look at the Warwalker Strider, AKA you might know them as Dreadnoughts if you're from the other universe. Um, zombified Dreadnoughts, that's right. Those are called Striders and they look great. I love them. So that this, this army also I think has a little bit more um, paint care put towards it. Uh, more variety of colors, more washes and things going on there. Um, flipping over to Legions Imperialis, I mean, we know, like, these are studio paint jobs, and even forgive, like, on the, on the right-hand side, those groupings are not quite to the resolution that they should be if you're doing this on a larger screen. Um, but the Dreadnoughts, the, the big war walkers are beautiful. I love them so much. Sorry, let me let my dog out. <laughs> Go, doggo. Yeah, I, I just love uh, the way they've turned out, especially the Derrideo ones, the ones with the missile launchers on them in the middle left are great. The infantry also looks smashing. They have good banners, uh, just, just really good. The other big, uh, I think the reason why Legion's Imperialis is just head and shoulders above uh, Warpath here in many regards is their vehicles are much, much better, more detailed. Um, that's an exceedingly high level of detail in these kits they take a bit to assemble too which you may find a detractor i don't i, I love assembly um and yeah they just look good they're fabulous the, the solar ox tanks too I, I specifically really like those um so yeah good stuff um moving on to gameplay believe it or not 
both of these games are just so gosh darn similar in many ways and how they play and what they're doing. Um, and unlike maybe some G-Dub products of the past, the rule book here for Legions Imperialis is very accessible, very clear. It's a playable game right out of the book. Um, we, we know and expect that from Mantic, and you can already see it if you watch battle reports or any other coverage about what the game really plays like. You just know, you, you understand. Both of these game systems are heavily component dependent, or er, components, <laughs> of course are component dependent token dependent um and here you can see some examples i stole this picture from foe hammer i have if, if you come after me and say i'm to take it down i will um and then some tokens on the left for 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 warpath we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, foe hammer token that should, should probably give you some pause maybe we'll talk about that when we get the value mm -hmm. yes we will um so yeah the gameplay are, are both great so the, these are looking really close and competitive at this stage right like Miniature-wise, let, let's just give it, okay, maybe it can even go up. Like I said, it could probably go up to a five for Legions of Periodus there. But Mantic Warpath is, is good. Um, lots of variety, beautiful minis as well, too. What about lore and fluff in background? Yeah, of course. Horus Heresy versus Warpath is just not even really a contest. Uh, Warpath is still growing, but I don't think ever its intent will be to release the volume of books, the story, the background, the the deep historical uh, uh, kind of pull that uh, Horus Heresy can root itself in. It just kind of goes without saying. So clear winner, Horus Heresy, Legions of Perialis for more fluff and background. Go go grab a Black Library book or two or three or 10 or 100. Um, <laughs> what about value for your hobby dollars? unsurprisingly goes to the Mantic game, uh, Warpath. And in fact, if you were to compare these two games in isolation, I think Warpath would go up to a five in value versus Legion's Imperialis, which would drop to a two. But if I compare them in just kind of the uh, whole ecosystem of miniature wargaming, a four three seems about right to me. And we can go to some more specifics here, right? So if we look at Legion's Imperialis's uh, starter box, uh, 170 dollars for 223 miniatures it gets you about 500 to 600 points times two um but if we compare that to a comparable pledge for warpath right now running on kickstarter for 113 dollars we get 310 minis tilde about it depends actually on what two uh, factions you choose in your pledge it will go uh, down obviously if you choose a little bit more elite army but those are 1,500 points each times two. Uh, Legions Imperialis, its desired game point level, I think is touted to be around 3,000 points. Uh, yeah, look, if you are gonna build with drop pods and all the different flavors that you want to build your uh, true Space Marine Force, which is what I would wanna do, it looks like I would spend close to $1,000 to get 3,000 points. That is just a dollar value that no single miniature game uh, I collect or play is ever going to get. Um, that's, a, that's an exceedingly high uh, price. Now, you could buy three of these starter boxes here and kind of mishmash, smash a force together. It's not very exciting. You're getting a lot of repeat units, obviously, to do that. If you do that, you're uh, one. And, you know, math that, it's $400 plus. You spend uh, the equivalent, that equivalent amount of an a pledge level over with Warpath, you get four armies at 2,000 points. So not only do you get four armies, four core armies, you get four deep reinforced armies with all the different flavorful commanders and specialist units and things like that. And each one then works out to be about 200 plus miniatures. Yeah, incredible. Um, so yes, we don't, we'll, beat that dead horse anymore but you you, you just know uh value is higher there what about company support and i'm going to be a little bit careful with what i say here because this is probably where i'm getting a little bit more opinionated but based on what i see in the current trajectory of what gw is doing right now it is very hard to get legions imperialis um you can still find a starter box but other units and things are just not in stock most places um 
that combined with where this is put in the GW gaming ecosystem as a as a boxed more specialist game, um, there's high odds that this game will not be supported in the long term from Games Workshop. There's a huge risk you're taking. So if you're saying throw a thousand dollars to get the army that I want, and with the potential of this being you know, not supported, not in the long-term stable of games for Games Workshop. I just I have a real hard time doing that. So you can already, oh, did I tip it? Do you know which one I've chosen yet? <laughs> I'll have to rewatch this and figure out that. Like, where did I tip my hand the strongest here? Yeah, it, I, I lean heavily Warpath. And because Mantic, look, if they release a game, like, <laughs> What are they doing right now with um, uh, Walking Dead? They got the IP again, or whatever, that was shored up, and they're re-releasing, they're basically releasing catch-up boxes for, for people to catch up to where they're at or buy in initially to the game, and then they're gonna go further and deeper. What have they done with their most one of their most popular games, Dead Zone, or the other very popular game, Kings of War? They're continually supported, the game refined, new things released for it, new armies, models updated. They, if if they release a game, they support it. Um, that's even true for things like Dreadball. Like, okay, a little bit more anemic, maybe feeling a little bit more like in the in the G-dub vein of how they support games. But even Dreadball gets, gets love now and then. So, um, yeah, uh, with confidence, I back and go in towards Warpath. And I think... This one probably for you is gonna personally kind of make or break what you want. So like, if you want a 10 millimeter sci-fi game, and the reason why I want one is it pairs well with my Drop Zone Commander, my Battletech terrain, uh, my uh, Cav terrain as well. So uh, 10 millimeter sci-fi across those four games, if I add Warpath to it, is just really nice and vibrant for me. Um, I think also, to me, the fact that we're getting aliens here, the, the asymmetrical variety of the different factions, and just kind of this more, do I say, do I kind of call it like comic booky, high octane sci-fi, you know, laser blasts, maybe a little pulpy, a little, a little tongue in cheek here and there. It's just, it's just fun. It's good. The game system is even more accessible in a way. And in fact, how I'm thinking about it is, this is gonna be the game that I want to teach my sons. The fir my first real true uh, measure with a measuring tape uh, miniature war game. That's what I'm gonna try and uh, bring to my two sons. Now we compare that to the rich tapestry of grimdark amazingness that is the Horus Heresy. I. If you want that grimdark historical fiction, really in my mind, Legions Imperialis does Horus Heresy better than Age of Darkness does, right? Um, the Horus Heresy is about large armies clashing and obliterating one another in a giant, messy civil war. Um, and Legions Imperialis delivers that, and I think it delivers that very, very well. Um, so yeah, my choice is Epic Warpath. It might not be yours. Um, I totally understand. I have the, I have Age of Darkness uh, miniatures and books. Uh, go traders. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'll just show you also. This is currently what I'm pledging for. I'm at the Lieutenant Pledge. I'm gonna get myself Forge Fathers and Asterians. Classic, right? Space dwarves versus spacey elves, robot elves. <laughs> um, I, I might also be tempted to throw uh, the enforcers in there as well. Uh, Veermen might be unlocked too. Um, yeah, there, there's lots to research and uh, go and love about this uh, game system that's coming to us um, next year. As of filming this, there are 10 days left to support it. If you want to learn more, Totally encourage you to go dig up some information on the interwebs, visit the Kickstarter page, and dig in. Right on, you guys. I hope you're having a still a fabulous start to 2024. I'll catch you there.